Hi, my name is Rohit and welcome to week 5 unit 2. In unit 2 of this course, we're going to talk about output options and the configuration options of business document output in SAP Business by Design. Let's begin. In SAP Business by Design, the generic term for output is defined as output management. It comprises of all activities related to the output of a business document in print, email, or the fax format. Form-based output can be output on an ad hoc basis or as an integrated part of the business process itself. So to summarize, the following output channels are supported. Print queues, email, fax. Also, the various types of output that can be supported are the print, aka form, in email, as well as XML. Process integrated output. Process integrated output ensures that the documents sent to the business partners only contain complete and approved data as part of the defined business process. It allows also to have output history so that this document can be tracked. Process integrated output of a document can be triggered, for example, when a business document is released or the business document is approved by a document owner. This process, however, depends on a lot on the business process itself and how it is configured. When the output of a document is triggered, the system uses the output settings of the document to determine which output channel and which form template needs to be used while creating the document. And depending on the defined output channel, the document is either sent to the print queue, emailed as a PDF attachment, or sent by fax. The appearance, the content of the document is defined by the form template. For each of the business document type, a default output channel and a form template can be configured by the administrator. The employee responsible for the document can override the default settings of the document prior to submission. Let's take an example. A sales employee is created and releases a customer invoice. The system then determines from the output settings of the document that the document needs to be sent to the email of the customer. The system then creates a PDF file using the form template defined in the output settings and then sends the PDF as an email attachment to the customer. If no error is returned by the mail server, the output status is recorded as successful in the output history tab of the customer invoice. We will see this more in detail in the demo. You can also configure and the, the various form elements of the business document. Administrators can edit the content, the layout, and the language-specific and the country-specific form templates online. You can also download their form template, edit it offline, and upload the edited template. Administrators can create rules, which can then be used to determine which form template can be used for the output of a business document under a defined set of conditions. Also, email templates are supported. An email template is used for the creation of personalized emails. You can upload email templates for a certain active form templates by using the create email template function. SAP Business by Design can support communication across geographic and language boundaries. Business language nuances can be captured in different form and email templates and can be sent in alignment with the requirement of the receiver country. All the configuration that has been explained can be used to enable multiple country channel output with each output that can be configured so that it is sent in the receiver country's language. In the demo, you will see that the output settings in Business by Design works with the sender country and the receiver language context, and hence communication can be defined based on these two parameters. Let's look at the system demo. So do you remember, in week 4, we had created an extension field and added it to the form template. Let's have a deeper look on how this was done. So firstly, we'll have to log in to the SAP Business by Design system as an administration user. Let's go to Application and User Management. Before we start, let's break down each of the form elements into their constituent parts and look at how each of them is defined. A master template which contains the header and the footer and the email disclaimer. Then there is a document specific output itself and an email template. 
Here is where you can see the master template uh, maintenance screen. Here, let's look at the form master template. <coughs> let's click on the Almica form template and let's edit this. This shows you the form master template itself. As you can see here, here you can upload the logo followed by the sender address, followed by the language in which this form master template would be used, followed by a footer and a header. Also, you can then assign an email disclaimer which can be attached to all your emails before this email is sent out. Let's close the fo form email and the master template. Let's now look at the document specific templates. This can be seen in the form template maintenance. Let's click on advanced and select the template group for let's say customer invoice, which is C41. And let's click on go. As you can see here, you have various different form templates for each of the business process variants of the customer invoice itself. For example, we have the customer credit memo, the down payments, and the customer invoice for professional services scenario. Let's look at the, the simple customer invoice template, which is for United States and English. Let's click on open with the easy form editor. The easy form editor is an online editable tool, which can be used to make sure that you can edit the form template on Business by Design system itself. You could also use Adobe Lifecycle Designer to make sure that you can edit the form template. As you can see here, this was the form that was generated when we had seen the output of the Fragile Items use case in the previous week. As you can see here, the fragile item shows up on the items. How did we make sure this came in here? If you look at the item table and the columns, here you can see that the fragile item has been added to as part of the item display here. We can change the label. which will then make sure that these changes are then there as part of your form template. Let's save this. Once this is saved, you can see that the form template has now been changed and this now, the fragile label itself has now been changed to is this fragile. We can now change the label for any of our form templates itself with any form element that you see within the form. This is an SAP delivered form. You can also create an entire form template by scratch. Let's publish this. Let's close this. And let's see how all of these things work on the go. So let's go to customer invoicing and find one of our invoice requests that are still have not been invoiced completely. So let's go to invoice documents and I see this particular invoice which has not yet been released. Let's click on edit. Let's click on view all. As you can see here, this particular item has not been marked as fragile. Let's have a quick look at how the preview looks like. So the form preview opens up. And we can see here that the changes that we had made to the form template is now visible here. Previously, this was fragile and now it has been changed to is this fragile. Let's close this and mark this particular item as fragile. And then let's look at the preview once again. Now, as you can see, the fragile option has been set to true and hence the form template preview as well shows the same. Now we can release this. Let's click on refresh. And let's open up this invoice. Let's have a look at the output history. The output history shows you all the outputs that this particular document has basically created. 
this output has been created because we have now released this particular customer invoice. Let's have a look at what is the data that has been created. As you can see here, the receiver of this document was <coughs> Silverstar, who is the account. This is his email, the phone number, and his fax and his other contact details. Let's also see that this has also been sent to him as an email. Let's have a look at the details of what was the email that was sent to him. So the email text looks something like this. As you can see here, I have basically just entered mostly a template email template, which can then be customized more so the customer can send a much more natural language like emails. So as you can see here, you can then enter, for example, what is the email header, the text, and what is the signing off and the disclaimers. So let's see where also this is maintained. Let's close this. Let's go to application and user management. And let's again go back to the form template maintenance. <coughs> let's click on the execute query. Let's filter for the template group C41, which is customer invoice. As you can see here, the form template for customer invoice also contains an email template. Let's click on the hyperlink yes. This is exactly the form email template variant which you see for this particular form. This can then be also customized by the customer. Let's create a new customer invoice. And see whether we can change these output settings in the runtime. So let's create one for luxury heating. Let's enter the product. Let's click on view all <coughs> and confirm all the data. As you can see here, this is a non-taxable product sale itself. Let's go to you can also and click on edit output settings. Within here itself, as you can see here, this is the default output settings that has been picked up based on this particular account. Where has this been defined? Good question. Let's have a look. Let me click on cancel. Let's go back to application user management. And we can see this maintained with the form template selection and the output channel selection. Let's have a look first at the output channel selection. Let's have a look at the rules for the output channel selection and the rules for customer invoice. Let's click on Go. As you can see here, we have defined that for the invoicing unit Almeca and the bill 2 being CP100-120, the default output channel that needs to be used is email, and the print queue that needs for this uh, particular form that gets generated for this particular document needs to be the default print queue. And let's say for every document that we sent out, two copies need to be made. This is the kind of setting that can be maintained within the edit output channel selection. Let's close this. Let's then go to the other setting, which is the form template selection. The form template selection, let's again select the rule for customer invoice. Let's click on go. As you can see here, we have now created a sequence of rules that can then define whether for a particular invoicing unit and for a particular bill to what should be the form template that should get chosen. And for the document type, what should be the form template that should be chosen. Let's close this. And let's go back to our demo where in which we now are trying to change all these settings in runtime. Let's click on you can also again and edit output settings. Based on the present setup, the email template has been chosen. But however, we can change all of that. So let's choose the template, let's say, for customer invoice for professional services. And then change this not via email, but via, let's say, the print queue. And then we can see, again, we can then change the settings for the printer, which would have been basically overwritten from the settings that we had defined in the output channel selection. Let's click on Apply. And let's again release this. So let me save this as an invoice. And let's release this. 
let's go back to the invoice. So this was the invoice that we created. Let's click on edit. Click on view all. And go to the output history. As you can see here, the status has now been set to pending because this has not been sent via email but via the printer. And then at this point of time, this is there within the print queue and it is being wait until at the end of the day, the printer resources are free and these documents go for print. As we have seen, we have created a custom invoice and have explored the various output options available in Business by Design and how you can leverage that to make your business com communication more nuanced. How we do all this and why we do all this can be ex used to define, let's say, very complex scenarios like e-invoicing. Electronic invoicing is not the necessarily the same as EDI invoicing. Electronic invoicing in its widest sense embraces EDI as well as XML. And these invoice messages can be also PDF. Historically, other formats such as PDF were not included in the wider definition of the electronic invoice because they were not machine readable. And the process benefits of the electronic message could not be achieved. However, as data extraction techniques are getting more and more evolved and environmental concerns have begun to dominate the business, there are more and more cases for the implementation of e-invoicing and other formats which are now being incorporated into a wider definition. Business by Design helps you also do e-invoicing. We have seen that we can also use the XML output of the customer invoice and which can be sent to all your customers who have e-invoicing requirements. Hope this session was helpful for you to understand the output options available. This concludes week 5 unit 2. Hope you had an informative session. Thank you and have a nice day.